Lesson 2.4, we're going to use bar graphs. A bar graph uses bars to show data. Each bar is labeled with a survey answer. So the survey was, what's the favorite color? So the survey answers are blue, red, green, or yellow. And the length of the bars tells how many. This is the number of people who chose those answers coming up along the side here. It's called the scale. And the scale is equally spaced numbers. It's labeled with what was counted. This scale is numbered from 0 to 45. It starts at 0, it's going by tens, and it goes up to 45. A bar graph can have bars that are vertical or bars that are horizontal. These bars are vertical. They go from the bottom up. See? They have the same data. These bars are horizontal bars, and they go across from left to right. They start on the left, and they go towards the right as the numbers get bigger. If we look here, we can see blue. Here's 30. Here's 40, and it's in the middle, so it must be 35. And on this one, blue is at 35. Red is at 20. This red one is at 20. This green one is in between 20 and 30, so it must be 25. This green one is also 25. This yellow one is in between the 10 and the 20, so it must be 15. And this yellow one is 15. They have the same data. One has vertical bars that go up from the bottom, and this one has horizontal bars that go across from left to right. And just like a frequency table or a tally table or a picture graph, we can see it has a title up here. And the words are, each word is capitalized. We can see it's labeled for the scale of what the scale is counting. And we can see it's labeled at the bottom for what the answers are. This bar graph shows favorite pets. And here's the answers that the people gave. We can see this scale is skip counting by fours. It goes from 0, 4, 8, 12, to 16. The little lines in between the numbers stand for skip counting by twos. If that's a four, and this is in the middle, it's halfway, it must be half of four, so it's a two. We could say zero, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, skip counting by twos. We can see 12 people chose dog as their favorite pet. Eight people chose cat. And bird is in between 4 and 8, so it must be 6. And reptile is also 6. Sometimes there won't be little lines in between the scale numbers. It'll just be an open space. And the space between two numbers stands for the amounts that are between those numbers. This scale is skip counting by 2's. 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. So we know if a bar was right here in the middle, that means the answer is a 1. And if the bar is right in the middle here, it must be a 3. We would know the answer was 3. It's in between the 2 and the 4. If our survey answers are a 2, 4, 5, 6, 8, we can use a scale that skip counts by twos. We would have five, the bar for five, in between the four and the six. But all the other numbers are numbers that skip count by twos. The only one that doesn't skip count by twos is the five. And we can use a bar that goes in between for that one. But all the others skip count by twos, so that would make sense. Three, six, 12, 18, 21, 24, we can use a scale that skip counts by threes or sixes. 
if we skip count by sixes, the bar for three would be in between zero and six. And the bar for 21 would be in between 18 and 24. So for these numbers, we could use a scale that has skip counting by threes or sixes. Either one would work. When the numbers for the survey answers are far apart from each other, our scale can use larger numbers. If we have numbers like 10, 20, 25, 40, we can use a scale that skip counts by tens. 10, 20, 30, 40. The bar for 25 would be in between the 20 and the 30. Some survey answers can be very large, like in the hundreds or thousands even. When the numbers for the survey answers are small, we can use a scale that counts by ones. If our answers are 1, 2, 3, 5, and 6, we can use a scale that counts by ones. Starts at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This bar graph is about favorite colors. This is the number of people that answered. Here are the colors, the answers that people gave. We can see it skip counts by 10, 10, 20, 30, 40. Because the answers are 15, 20, 25, 35, we could have used a scale that skip counts by fives. Bar graphs make it easy to see data. Just by looking at this bar graph, can you tell which was the most favorite color? Which color did people choose the most? We can see that this bar is the tallest, so that one has the most answers, blue. Can you see which one is least? We look for the shortest one. It would be yellow. Which answer received five fewer than red? We look for red. It's a 20. If we're looking for five fewer, that's a clue to subtraction. 20 minus five fewer is equal to 15. So which one had 15 as the number of favorite colors? We look on our scale. Here's 15. That matches yellow. The answer is yellow. So here we have our bar graph of favorite colors. How many people took the survey? We can add the amounts from the answers to get a total. Yellow is 15. Green is 25. Red is 20. And blue is 35. We add all the numbers of answers, 15 plus 25 plus 20 plus 35. Starting in the ones place, we have 5 plus 5 is 10, plus 5 more is 15. We regroup the 10 from the 15, because that's a 10 and 5 ones, isn't it? We regroup the 10 to the tens place and put our 5 ones down. Then we add the tens column. We have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That means 95 people answered what their favorite color was. Now, using the information, the data from the bar graph, which two colors combined were chosen as often as a blue? We look and see what blue is. It's 35. So we need two that will equal 35. Can you see two of these that will equal 35? We can use the scale. We can use the math we just did. Which two colors have answers that would equal 35? If you said red, 20, and yellow, 15, you're right. The red answers plus the yellow answers would equal 35. 20 plus 15 is equal to 35. 
The results from a survey were put into a frequency table. Remember, frequency tables use numbers. Which bar graph, which one of these bar graphs makes sense and matches the data from the frequency table? So we're going to look closer at these, but we need to see are the bars the correct length to match the data? Are the numbers in the scale good numbers to use? So let's take a closer look. They're all about the same thing. Favorite color. They all have the same answers. Blue, red, green, or yellow. But it needs to match this frequency table. The first thing I see is blue should be 8. This one says blue is 6, so it's not this one. All the numbers have to match. And if blue doesn't match, well, then that's not all the numbers. So let's try this one. Blue needs to be an 8. Yes, this one has blue as an 8. Red needs to be a 4. Yes, red is a 4. Green needs to be 6. Hmm. This green is in between the 4 and the 6. That means it must be a 5. So that's not the right one because the green bar is wrong. What about this one? Blue needs to be 8. Yes, it's 8. Red needs to be 4. Yes, it's 4. Green needs to be 6. Hmm, it's a 5 again. And yellow is supposed to be 3, and it's only a 2. So that one's not right. This is the only one left. It must be the correct one, but let's double check to be sure. Blue is an 8. Red is a 4. Green is a 6. And yellow is a 3. So this is the correct bar graph that matches that frequency table. They all have to match. All the answers have to match the numbers from the frequency table. In our next lesson, we're going to make some bar graphs. You can make a survey and ask your friends and family, and we'll see how to make our own bar graphs. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.